of other things we need to think about. We need to think about sterics, which is just uh, in layman's term, the size of your nucleophile. And in general, as the nucleophile gets bigger, it becomes, um, it's not as nucleophilic. Uh, and I know that's kind of clashing with what we said about the hard and soft, but just think about the fact that uh, a bigger nucleophile is going to be, a, especially in a carbon substitution, carbon is a hard electrophile. And so the bigger the nucleophile, the worse the interaction between itself and carbon. Also, just from a practical standpoint, um, when we look at the size of these molecules, the terp-butoxide molecule is huge compared to the methoxide molecule. So just from a practical perspective, the terp-butoxide have, will have a more difficult time accessing the electrophilic site than the methoxide would. All right, let's think about another uh, consideration, resonance considerations. In general, if you have a resonance stabilized nucleophile, it's not going to be as good a nucleophile as a nucleophile that has a more concentrated charge. You know that resonance delocalizes charge, right? And so when we look at this series of nucleophiles, the phenoxide anion is a, is a, a worse nucleophile than the acetate anion because the phenoxide anion can make uh, several resonance forms. I think it's four resonance forms you can draw for the phenoxide anion, whereas there's only one resonance form that you can draw for the acetate. And so that those multiple resonance forms are going to delocalize that charge and make that uh, charge less concentrated and thus less nucleophilic. And then for the acetate, that's going to, it has one resonance form, so that charge is a little bit more delocalized than the isopropoxide anion, which is all the way on the right. All right. So in general, if you have multiple resonance forms, they're going to delocalize charge and they're going to decrease nucleophilicity. So if you had to choose which one of these was the best nucleophile, it would be the isopropoxide, which is on the right. Uh, if you had to choose which one was the worst, it would be the phenoxide, which is all the way on the left. All right, so I'm gonna le I'll leave you with this problem. Um, arrange the nucleophiles in order of increasing nucleophilicity. So that would be least reactive to most reactive um, in both DMF and acetic acid. So do it separately and let me know what you come up with. This is a pop quiz. It's worth three points. You can go to course sites and take that quiz. All right, so here, let's summarize this. All right, so in polar A product solvents, the following trend is observed. Right, you have um, decreasing nucleophilicity going from left to right and decreasing nucleophilicity going from top to bottom. In polar product solvents, we see a different trend, right? The nucleophilicity decreases going from left to right, but it increases going from top to bottom, right? Polar product solvents solvate smaller nucleophiles, making them less reactive. Larger nucleophiles and polar product solvents are less reactive. And then, in general, atoms to the right are less nucleophilic. So when we talk about left to right, and you compare and say carbon to nitrogen, well, carbon is going to be more nucleophilic because it's further to the left than nitrogen is on the periodic table.